Welcome back to Talking Story. My name is John Minton, and I hope all of you had as good a Thanksgiving as I did if you celebrate. If you don't, I just hope you had an amazing week and weekend. Uh, it is time for our Weekly Reader Sunday Checkup again. Um, thank you all for wishing me a very happy Thanksgiving. Uh, it was just so touching to me to get all of your well wishes and everything. I had the best time. There was so much food. There was so much drink. There was so much family. There was so much love. There was so much laughter. It was almost too much. It was just a cornucopia of riches, and it was amazing. I hope everyone had the same experience to the kickoff of this holiday season. Uh, but let's get right to it. What was I reading this past week? What did I wrap up? I got to the end of Jonathan Mawberry's Keg in the Damned. Now, two things on this. Number one, if you are looking for that old school sword and sorcery feel, that melancholic warrior against the world all on his own, having to redeem himself after a horrible fall, think think Elric, think Driss, think, think Conan. If that's the kind of vibe you're looking for, this may be a book for you. New York Times bestselling author, five times Bram Stoker Award winner, Jonathan Mowbray. But with someone that usually does horror and pulls no punches and has won five Stoker Awards, I will tell you this. I have read some Grim Dark now since starting this channel. I have read Joe Abercrombie. I have started to read Mike Shackle's trilogy, uh, and, and I love it. I love it all. But this comes with some trigger warnings, people. <laughs> he pulls no punches. It is, I think, the most brutal that I have read yet. If you uh, don't necessarily want to read uh, about sexual abuse or trauma, uh, child abuse or trauma, just the good old ultra violence. This may not be the book for you. It, it may be on a scale of one to 582,000, all the way pegged over too much. Uh, because again, he is one of those writers that doesn't pull punches and absolutely goes for it. For me personally, I thought it was a uh, 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 just that old school sword and sorcery feel. Um, some things did like, whoa, whoa, that's a little much, but I hung with it. And uh, the other thing I absolutely loved about this is he is also editor of Weird Tales, that amazing magazine that has been with us since the pulp age that has done so much for the horror field. He's now editor of that. He understands the history of horror and you can tell because this takes place in his shared universe, uh, Jonathan Mawberry's shared universe, which started all the way back with him uh, in the first trilogy, the Pine Deep trilogy, uh, that he won the Stoker for Best New Novel of, the first book of that, Ghost Road Blues. Then he started his techno-thriller series with the Joe Ledger series. Then he led into his zombie apocalypse that spoke to so many uh, people. That it was, this was became canon for George Romero. When he read it, he said, I want to add a story to your short story book that takes place in this apocalypse, but only if we can make it butt up against my movies and make it canon. Uh, I can't think of any better way to sell a zombie apocalypse. So... This takes place 50,000 years after that fall in that zombie apocalypse. And what has happened is the old H.P. Lovecraft eldritch things, old gods, elder gods are starting to reassert themselves on this world as civilization has sprung up again after that fall. Uh, and we have battle lines being drawn between Haster as he creeps through realities into the king in yellow and the battle lines drawn between him and the great sleeping one, Cthulhu. Uh, so if you're a fan of, of Lovecraft, if you're a fan of the mythos, if you're a fan of cosmic horror going all the way back to that grand tradition of weird tales, this may be for you as well. I found it so wonderful. It, it had that, uh, that feel of the mythos. It also had that feel of alternate universes uh, butting up against each other in that in that Michael Moorcock way. So there's so much going on here. It's such a love story to everything that went before him. And if that's the type of thing you're looking for, it could be absolutely a fun, fun romp for you. After that, 
I started my last read that I have set up for the month of November, book two in the Warlord Chronicles, Bernard Cornwell's The Enemy of God. Now, a lot of people, a lot of you, a lot of you, my new friends have told me this is could be their favorite book of the trilogy. This is the, the one that stands out in the trilogy. And thank you so much, Heidi. She gave me the idea. It's like, you know, I want to read all three of these before I do something. I don't know if I just want to do a review. I don't know if I want to do something different. And I think it was Heidi that told me, you know what? I've seen top 10 moments from a trilogy or a series. Maybe you should think about that. So that is what I am doing. As I'm reading through this, I'm, oh, oh, that makes a list. I got to catalog that right away. And it's like, I don't know if 10 is going to be enough. There are so many just high points of this Arthurian legend that Mr. Cornwell just knocks it out of the park on. Uh, I might start running short of slots if I keep it to a top 10, but I am cataloging it so far. This is, I th and I'm about halfway through. I should finish in, uh, I would say, you know, probably a couple days. Um, I, I, for me, this is going to rate even higher than book one, guys. I, 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 this, there are some things that happen in this that if you know the legends and the lore is just like, oh, that's, that's a really cool spin on that. That's, um, ugh, just character moments for Merlin that just make me smile. Uh, so this is just absolutely, and, and, and the overlaying theme of the old religion versus Christianity as it moves in, uh, to Britain and, uh, what faith will hold sway over its peoples as, uh, the Britons go to war or try and, and scrape out land away from the Saxons. And uh, it, it just amazing. And also the theme of, of seeing it all through the eyes of, of Durfel as he moves up in the ranks of Arthur's uh, armies. And uh, it, it's not seen through the eyes of Arthur. Arthur is such a mythical great figure moving through the landscape of this story. It's all seen through Durfel, which we can connect to because he, he is one of us. He's one of us if we would have been there just trying to make his way. Just a squirrel trying to get a nut in the, in the world of demigods and legendary characters like Merlin and Arthur. Uh, so I absolutely am loving this. Um, I, I think this will be my favorite of the three. I haven't read Excalibur yet, uh, but I not only that, I think it quite possibly could make my top 10 best reads of the year. It's, it's that, it's, it's that level for me. Uh, so what is coming next on the reading train that wraps up everything we had set up as a TBR for November. I made a little switch audible real quick. I, I had a couple of shorter volumes and I swapped out, uh, Kagan because I was just feeling old school sword and sorcery. I was just feeling something, you know, just all the way back to basics after I had wrapped up Empire of Silence. So uh, we changed it a little bit, but that does bring us to the end of what we had planned for November. So I'm going to jump ahead a little bit because uh, I haven't shown you the TBR for December, but it is stacked. I'm talking some Christmas chonkers uh, for the season. So I'm going to probably a few days early start the first read for December, and that is going to be book two in Mike Shackle's Last War Trilogy, A Fool's Hope. Um, and everyone tells me that I have spoke to that book two is even better than book one, and I was blown away by book one. I had to amend my score after the author reached out to me about a little plot hole I thought I saw, which I didn't see. I was just reading it so quickly because I was so into it. Um, but everyone tells, this is even better. This is even ratchets all of it up a notch, and it's just... I can't even imagine it, but the characters, I am in love with these characters in this series. I cannot wait to get back to them. Uh, so I'm going to start December a bit early, and this could make my top book uh, the list as well uh, from what I'm hearing as far as this Grim Dark trilogy goes. Um, so that's pretty much catches up me up on the reading stuff, guys. Uh, other than that, uh, what is coming up Last week, last week on the channel, what did we do? We, uh, oh, I got my top 10 list of standalone fantasies out, and I did not check what the name, who the name of this person was, but such a lovely, lovely viewer commented and let me know one of my picks 
Sean and McGuire's middle game is actually a series and the second book is out and the third book will be coming out in 2024. And first of all, I'm over the moon happy because I loved middle game. I thought it was such an amazing uh, read, uh, but I'm embarrassed. I didn't check deep enough to know it was a trilogy or a series even moving further than a trilogy. So I have to make an amendment. I have to change that list and I'm going to make the amendment right now for anyone that watched that that first video of the week that we had out there, our top 10 standalone fantasies. Middle Game is not a standalone. Thank you so much for letting me know and, and, and making me hip to that. I'm going to slide right in. And I angsted over this. I wasn't sure if I could count this as fantasy, but I'm going to count it as fantasy. I'm sliding it in. As opposed to Middle Game, I'm sliding in there. Um, Lamb, the gospel according to Biff, Jesus' best friend, by Christopher Moore. If you've ever read any Christopher Moore, it, it is laugh out loud funny. It is a stop laughing on a dime because it's going to hit you right in the chest. Uh, and this is the story uh, about an archangel that realizes there's some holes in the Gospels, uh, most, most noted where Jesus is a younger man than in his 30s. He comes down to the earthly plane. He raises from the dead uh, Jesus' best friend, Biff, he sets him up in a hotel room uh, and allows him to do nothing but write out all of his experiences uh, that he had with Jesus as a child and a young man growing up. And it, it it's the philosophy of it is great. The humor of it is great. It's just a great, great read. So on that list, I'm pulling middle game out and I'm sliding Biff in. Um, and that's how I'm going to fix that. Thanks so much again for, for letting me know about my faux pas and letting me know there's a second book uh, in the middle game series. And I already put it on my wish list. It probably would be on the next order that I that I start bringing in. Um, the other thing we did last week was we got up our review of Empire of Silence. Uh, I was check that out. I, I, I don't want to go over what I thought of the book again because I spent a good chunk of time with it on that review. I What I can tell you is... I was putting together, because I like to think ahead and plan ahead, and I'm putting together my January stack, my January TBR, and I could not put off any further trying to slot in that next Sun Eater read. So that should tell you right there what I thought. I cannot wait to get back to Hadrian Marlowe's journey and see how this young man, Christopher Rocchio, progresses as a writer uh, I, I am just thrilled, thrilled to continue with that. So check out that full review if you wanted to know what all my thoughts were about that. Um, and what are we going to do this coming week on the channel? This is our last week of November. We are going to be sliding into the final month of the year. And there's no better time to bring out the big stack for December. We are going to release on Tuesday's video. We're going to release our December TBR. Everything that we're going to do to wrap up the year, starting with this read, but then it just keeps going into heavy hitter after heavy hitter uh, that could possibly impact my best reads of the year list. I'm trying to get them all in there. If there's a chance it could make a difference, I want to get it in before the end of the year. Uh, so that will be out on Tuesday. What are TBR for December is going to be. And then, guys, I announced this last week, and I am beyond, beyond blown away, over the moon, thrilled that our Thursday video, we're going to start our new series. We're going to start talking stories with tubers, and our very first guest for the live stream coming up Thursday at 8 o'clock Eastern is going to be Mike from Mike's Book Reviews. He is the whole reason, one of the main reasons I started this channel. The first person I found on BookTube when I was like, you know, my reading's getting kind of stale. I want to get back into books and I, I want to, to have some ideas of some new writers. And he was the first person that, that, my, that my fingers uh, and search took me to. And uh, wow, just the way he's been able to build 
a community and make it feel like a gathering of family every time I watch one of his videos. I cannot wait. The whole reason of me starting all this was it's like, man, I would love to hang out and talk to folks like that. I have been lucky enough to do a, a little bit of that, go on Tori's channel and some other channels. And uh, uh, now we're going to start our own series and the first live stream coming up Thursday, the 30th, last day of November. Talking Story with Tubers is going to be Mike, and I cannot wait. So that is going to be uh, the second video this week. And then we'll wrap up the first Sunday in December. We'll be right back here to wrap up everything together. Hang out again. This has become one of my favorite times of the week. I can't tell you. I look forward to it all week long to just kind of slow down, take a deep breath, hang out with all you guys, talk about books for a little bit. I hope your reading journey is great. I hope you had amazing reads last week. I hope you have a TBR set up that would just bowl over anybody if they bumped into it. I hope you've got tons of stories on deck to, to carry you through the holidays because I do. And uh, a lot of it is due to you making your suggestions and keep those suggestions and comments coming. I love them. I love comments. I try to answer like right away if it's at all possible. Um, hit me up with them. Let me know how your reading journey is going, what you're thinking, what you'd like to see. Uh, if, if you've stopped by a couple times and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, I just, you know what? I, 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 really, it feels good. It feels right to do it. Just click it. Just click that thumbs up and that subscribe button. It feels good. I can't describe it. Um, I've done it for so many other channels and it gives me a tingle. Uh, I hope it's the same for you. So what have I, wrapping up here, what have I gotten into on uh, the TV train? Uh, I'm all caught up with Monarch of Monsters, that uh, Godzilla show on um, Apple+. Plus. It, yeah, I'm... I, I'm not going to say it makes sense, but it's a heck of a lot of fun. It is a hot mess, but you know, I, it, it doesn't matter to me. If you're a comics fan and you can recognize the name Matt Fraction, he is one of the main people, uh, as a showrunner behind the scenes, putting this all together. So if you do like Marvel comics and if you are a Matt Fraction fan, that might be a good reason to check it out that, or if you're just a Godzilla fan or a Mothra fan or any of the others, uh, I, I think you will enjoy what you get up to on that Apple Plus series. I am also on Apple Plus, uh, all caught up on For All Mankind. This is one of my favorite shows, alternate history of if we had kept our foot on the accelerator for the space race from the 60s uh, to current. Uh, and it's it's going through all those different decades. And it's been just an amazingly high production value show with, with outstanding performances. Um thought-provoking moral issues the characters have to deal with. It's just everything that you look for to be sucked into a great show. Uh, I can't recommend that enough. I also caught the very first Doctor Who special because my man David Tennant is back. For me, he is and will always be the Doctor. I just thought his performance was amazing when he when he uh, had the reins uh, for that franchise. So he's back for three or four specials. I watched the first one today. And it, 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 Russell T. Davis is back, and it gives me hope going forward. Would I say it was a 10 out of 10 for a return? No. I wouldn't. Um, emotionally, it packed a real punch for me towards the end. I will say, uh, if art is thrown out there to elicit an emotional response, it absolutely did that for me by the end. Um, but I wouldn't say it was one of those 10 out of 10 moments of the doctor when I just turn the TV off and go, wow, that, um, you know, I'm gobsmacked. It wasn't quite that, but it still hit me in the feels like big time. Uh, so that's pretty much it for me. Oh, and I think I'm about halfway through Netflix's Fall of the House of Usher. Oh, I cannot recommend this enough. It is amazing, guys. And again, it is a smorgasbord of everything Poe that you can imagine mashed into one story of a capitalist American family uh, spiraling story of excess. And it's so much fun. Uh, it doesn't take itself 
too, too seriously. There are still some great times and great laughs in there and amazing performances. And I think I, I loved Midnight Mass. And when I finish this, I mean, this may be right up there with Midnight Mass for me of my favorite Mike Flanagan thing on Netflix that I've seen. Uh, so if you haven't checked it out yet, absolutely check it out. I'm about halfway through. I should probably be maybe done by next Sunday uh, when we check in again. Uh, but it's like, it, it, it's, it's just outstanding how he can get in and layer so many post stories into one eight episode series. My hat's off to him. Uh, so that's it for me, guys. Let me know how you're doing. I can't wait to speak to all of you. I hope the holiday seasons again kicked off in just grand fashion for you. And I will see you this coming week with my TBR. And please, if at all possible, be there for the live stream coming up on Thursday the 30th, 8 o'clock Eastern. Me and Mike from Mike's Book Reviews. We need your comments. We want to we wanna chat with everybody. I'm going to try and make it just kind of an open forum uh, so we can both see comments and we can both just be rapping back and forth with each other and everybody that's in the comment section. That's our goal. And, and I know Jacob is working uh, OT to, to be able to make that happen so we all can, can have a chance uh, to talk to each other as easily as possible. So that's it for me this week. My name is John Minton, and this has been Talking Story.